Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, I'm gonna focus on what a mass spectrometer is and how it works. In some of the later episodes, I'm gonna go through in detail the calculations that you'll need to be able to do to answer some more of the complex questions on this topic. This is topic 1.1 of the AQA A-Level Chemistry Specification. So a mass spectrometer is an analytical machine used in many laboratories across the world. It's a tool used to measure the masses of different elements, isotopes, or compounds. In the AQA A-level specification, we focus on a type of mass spectrometer called time of flight. A mass spec machine will measure the relative atomic masses or the relative molecular masses, and it will also measure the abundance of different isotopes present in a sample. And this is what we focus on most during this course. There are four main steps to how a mass spectrometer works. First, a sample is placed in the machine and it's ionized. These ions are then accelerated using an electric field and sent into a flight tube or ion drift. At the end of the drift, they're detected and their abundance is measured along with how long it took to travel the length of the flight tube. This data is then used to calculate the mass of the ion. Ionization is the first step. It gives the atoms in the sample a positive charge so they can be accelerated down the flight tube. There are two methods that we need to learn about for our specification. If we're removing an electron, this is done using an electron impact ionization. And if we're adding a proton, this is done using electrospray ionization. It's important that we can describe in detail how both of these work. In electron impact ionization, the sample of atoms is bombarded by high energy electrons. These knock off the electrons from the sample, leaving it with a positive charge. We can show this as a simple equation where I've used M to represent any element. It's really important to remember the state symbols when writing out this equation as the ionization takes place in the gaseous phase. In the second method, electrospray ionization, the sample is first dissolved in a volatile solvent such as methanol. This is then injected through a positively charged needle which has a very high voltage. This causes each molecule to gain a proton from the solvent which produces MH plus ions. This can be shown with this equation, again remembering to show the state symbols of the samples as gases. Once the ions are formed, they're accelerated in a negatively charged electric field. It's really important to remember that in this step, all the ions are given the same amount of kinetic energy. This is key to how a mass spectrometer works, but it's also very useful to remember when we start to look at the calculations. The next step of the mass spectrometer is the ion drift, or flight tube. This is where the now accelerated ions travel through and separate before they reach the detector. The ions separate because they travel at different speeds. All the ions are given the same amount of kinetic energy in the mass spectrometer. And as Ke equals a half mv squared, as we increase the mass of an ion, we'll decrease its velocity. This means that the heavier ions take longer to reach the detector, whilst the lighter ions travel faster and arrive at the detector first. Detection is the final step of the mass spectrometer. Ions hit the detector plate after travelling down the flight tube. The plate is negatively charged and when positive ions hit the plate, they cause the current to flow. The abundance of that ion is proportional to the size of the current that flows and the mass of the ion can be calculated using the time it took to arrive at the detector. The final output from the mass spectrometer is a mass spectrum. This takes the flow of the current and turns it into an abundance and plots it as a spectrum. Instead of plotting mass along the bottom, we plot the ratio of mass to charge. In most cases, this represents the mass of the ion, as the charge on the ion will usually be plus one. However, in some cases, the ion may have a charge which is greater. These cases are rare at A-level. Let's finish up by summarizing the key points of how a mass spectrometer works. It measures the mass to charge ratio for each isotope. In most cases, this number is the same as the mass. It also measures the abundance present of each isotope. There are four main steps in the mass spectrometer, ionization, acceleration, ion drift, and detection. There are two methods of ionization, electron impact, where electrons are fired at the sample to knock off electrons, and electrospray ionization, where a proton is added to the molecule. All ions are given the same kinetic energy which means the heavier ions will take longer to travel through the flight tube and to reach the detector compared to the lighter ions. The detector works by measuring current flow. This is proportional to abundance. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful. Please hit the thumbs up below and give us a like if you have, and make sure you subscribe to get more chemistry content each week.